We're called Neons. Sinners plucked from hell to do God's dirty work. But I'm finding it hard to believe we're in heaven. Hello, my name is Donta, and this is... A game that has caught my attention and been taking up most of my free time after coming out. A game that allows the most ADHD ravaged, riddle deprived goblins to shine, and Steve Blum fans to bust all over their crusty keyboards. And the game that is worth your time. Why is Neon White worth your time? Well, it's pretty fucking amazing. Let me tell you why. You are White, a sinner taken from hell and sent to heaven to handle a demon infestation for God and his believers. Your mission is simple, but your enemies are numerous, your tools are powerful but limited, and there are very few people that you can trust. Race against the clock and rise above the rest while killing everything you see. This is what Neon White is all about. I'm here to give you the basics though, in case that was too vague. In Neon White, you run, jump, and fight your way to victory. And while it all seems simple at first, it is surprisingly deep like a transition from shallow water to deep sea. Running on water gives you a speed boost, jumping is a hindrance to your speed at times but is essential to getting around, and guns do a lot more than just shoot the enemy. Your arsenal is what makes the game. It is essential to not only master your aim, but also to master the abilities that come out of discarding your weapons. You begin the game with your trusty katana, a weapon that you always have but is relatively useless for its lack of abilities and limited damage. Despite this, learning how to utilize it to save ammo and other gun cards is a very useful skill. It can also parry, which is a very niche skill, albeit a useful one in the pinch. First, you'll be blessed with a handgun, or Elevate, which is a weapon you'll quickly grow to love. Besides being a simple pistol to blast demons with, it allows you to double jump which is by far one of the most useful abilities in any video game ever made. From the pistol, you move on to the machine gun, or Purify. Besides having way better damage than the pistol and more ammo to boot, discarding the machine gun allows you to toss a sticky bomb that not only kills demons in a large radius, but also gives you the ability to jump around like your demo man. This explosion also allows you to break red obstacles, which is very important. Master the machine gun's ability, and you'll be breaking speedrunning records in no time. Next up is the sniper, or Godspeed. The sniper allows you to kill most enemies in one shot from great distances, but you don't get many bullets. To compensate for what it lacks, you can discard it to dash directly forward to cover large amounts of grounds, break red obstacles, and kill any demon in your way. Keep one on hand whenever you can, and you can shred a few seconds off any run to leap right into the exit gate. Moving on from the sniper is the SMG, or Stomp. The SMG is brutal to enemies at close range, but it runs out of ammo quickly and at far ranges you might as well not shoot at anything at all. Its discard ability allows you to fall quickly and crush anything beneath you, which is something you have to get the right timing and positioning on to make the most out of your skill usage. Use the ability over any red barrel and you'll go flying. Once you graduate from spray and prey, you'll be blessed with a shotgun, or fireball. Besides giving you the ability to blast every demon in the face like Doom Guy, the shotgun provides a much better version of the sniper's ability to dash. Discard it and you can move in any direction you please, complete with the destructive abilities you expect after using the sniper. Arguably, my favorite weapon whenever it shows up. Last, but certainly not least, is the rocket launcher, or Dominion. Like you would expect from a rocket launcher, this bad boy's rockets are fatal to anything within its blast radius, can break any obstacle with just the explosion, and like Quake or TF2, you can use the rockets to blast yourself around at high speeds at no cost to your precious health. Just aim at the ground or wall and start shooting. This passive ability is crucial to getting a good run on most levels that feature the rocket launcher, so get a good hang of it. Just as crucial is its active discard ability, which lets you grapple on any surface and move semi-destructively, similar to the sniper and shotgun. Objectively, this makes the RPG the best of all weapons granted to you. Also, if you ever run out of ammo, you'll always have your fist to rely on. Only that I would suggest pressing F whenever this happens because if a demon doesn't kill you, the rest of the level will. Master your arsenal and have a fun time killing demons and zooming through every expertly crafted level in this game. Seriously, the team who worked on this game's level design must have put their blood, sweat, and tears in every bit of this game to make it something anyone and everyone can enjoy. A novice can do a good run, an expert can do a great run, but a maniac can do a perfect run with all the tools and hints the devs provided. This is me playing a level like the average video game journalist. And here's me playing that same level like the loser I know I am. Unlike any other standard industry title, the game's freaking replayable speedrunning design was very intentional, and I doubt anyone would have to exploit the game in a nasty way to get a very good time on any of the numerous levels found here. It's all just a matter of... 
skill issue. But even if you need to get better at a certain level, replaying them doesn't feel like a drag as there's a button dedicated to restarting, and every level is short enough to where you never feel like you're being tortured for trying again and honing your skills to become the best on the in-game leaderboards. While we're still on the gameplay, I should mention that the demons you face on every level come in various shapes and forms. Some demons are quite simple in their design, and depending on their color, they can grant you a specific weapon to use. Others are a bit more complicated and incredibly dangerous to be around. I'm not going to go in depth with this, just remember to be careful around any chest that gives you a funny look. Moving on from the game's stellar gameplay, Neon White actually has a story that's worth talking about. While the game's levels are so fun you'll almost forget your hero has a motive behind fighting demons and being fast as fuck, Neon White's Adult Swim anime-esque story is quite entertaining, and unlike most other games, I paid attention for this one. Yellow, Violet, Green, Mikey, Raz, Gabby, Red. These characters started off annoyingly quirky, but they grew on me and helped carry the plot along as you put the pieces together and find out exactly why you're in heaven fighting demons. Some parts are very weeby, dorky, and all sorts of kind words for cringy, but the parts that aren't so were pretty good. It also helps that White is voiced by Steve Blum, the magical voice behind Cowboy- I mean Brimstone from Valorant. Is that the alt girl I saw from earlier? Every other voice actor and actress did a good job as well, and while some parts of the game aren't voiced at all, I didn't find the game lacking because of this. And if the voice acting wasn't enough to carry it, the artwork and aesthetics of Neon White are more than enough to lure in the average zoomer looking for something that's a little different from the rest. It all reminds me of a Suda51 game, which is a very big compliment to the developers. Besides the main plot to occupy your time, you can also get to know every important character better by giving them gifts found in almost every level in the game. While two of the rewards for doing this are just simple entertaining dialogue and information about your past, the other reward is levels that are themed around whoever you're bonding with. Most of these levels are fun, others are just okay. You can also get gifts as you form bonds with others, but all of these are strictly cosmetic pieces that go directly into your room in heaven and do not help with gameplay at all. Similar to the relationship system but requiring much less effort, clearing a mission grants you additional filler in the form of heavenly delight tickets, which you can redeem for a comedic moment during downtime. After you beat the game and max out your relationships, you're also granted the ability to speedrun the entire game in different portions of it in various character-themed gauntlets that can either be pleasant or incredibly painful depending on how masochistic you are. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention one more important thing in this shitty review about this amazing game that makes it better than any other game releasing this year and next year and all their years after. The game's soundtrack is made by motherfucking Machine Girl. Hey. <laughs> Is this the best indie game of 2022? That's presumptuous to say, but is this a game worth your time and money? I certainly think so. The only thing this game lacks is a level creator and Steam Workshop support so people can make their own freaky levels to share and play, but with 97 main missions to run and a handful of bonus levels, there's more than enough here for the average freak. Although I would like to see a spin-off game in the future that has level sharing and creating features with leaderboards and shit like that. It would definitely sell like hotcakes. Neon White is a game that has something for everyone, and for $25 on Steam and at least 20 hours of fun that can run on any modern computer, I'd say that's quite the deal. Go buy a copy or two now, and get to playing. Hell, you can even buy it on the Nintendo Switch. If you're a fucking loser. Me, I guarantee that they don't want me It's something just a little different by how I run things 
Maybe it's the way I turn my enemies to lunch meat Or maybe it's the way I smash everything in front of me They don't want it, I do it so easy, it's funny, G huh. I turn a vet into a wannabe and do it to the death I put them in their final scene, hey Yeah, yeah, yeah